Mr. Safadi, thank you for joining DW. Now, Jordan is seen as such a beacon of stability in the Middle East. It uh, has very close ties with Germany, even uh, hosting German troops there. But it faces, of course, enormous challenges. Um, top of the list being the vast number of refugees that it houses. And then, of course, we have a pandemic on top of that over the past year. Is Jordan getting the international support that it needs? Thank you so much, and, and it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, we've been at the receiving end of every crisis in the region, uh, and uh, yet we remain committed to our uh, principles of working for peace, working for stability, because we do believe that unless we're able to create a regional and indeed a global environment of peace and stability, none of us will be able to move forward towards meeting our, our number one goal, which is creating a better lives for all our people. Uh, uh, refugees is among one of the many challenges that, that Jordan faces and uh, uh, in Germany in particular we have a solid partner uh, our relationship is strategic uh, uh, in the bilateral sphere we're working very very closely to each other uh, on bilateral issues and also vis-a-vis uh, -vis regional issues where we have a common interest again of resolving regional crises and and finding horizons for peace stability and therefore uh, uh, prosperity uh, Germany has been a solid partner for us supporting our economic development. Uh, so we are working uh, closely together in countering uh, terrorism and, and, and extremism. Uh, we are coordinating very closely in efforts to resolve the uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict, addressing the Syrian crisis. Uh, all these are common challenges which no one country can do uh, deal with on its own. Uh, indeed, in Jordan, uh, we uh, are facing tremendous challenges. The support of partners like Germany is key to that in relation to the uh, refugees uh, file in particular. Uh, uh, Germany has been solid in, in supporting us and support, supporting us help the refugees and supporting the refugees them, uh, themselves. That said, however, uh, what we need to emphasize is that refugees cannot be the responsibility of host countries only. It is a global challenge and therefore the solution has to be global. We do uh, appreciate the tremendous support that we got from our partners in Europe and the US and others, but we also must ring the alarm that we are witnessing uh, dwindling uh, resources towards supporting the refugee issue and that is dangerous because it does impact uh, first and foremost the refugees themselves and host countries' abilities to provide them the decent, uh, dignified life that they need. So, uh, in German, with, with Germany in particular, we have a strategic relationship, continued cooperation uh, and discussion between His Majesty and the Chancellor, between me and my uh, counterpart, uh, Minister Heiss. Uh, we have an institutional uh, cooperation that is proceeding extremely well on both bilateral and towards regional issues. Uh, but refugees, again, is a global challenge. We need to work together because investment in refugees is really is investment in our collective security. Uh, I'd like to ask a specific question, though, about support uh, in, in the current situation, because on top of the refugees, you have the pandemic. Um, and Jordan has been praised for providing refugees with vaccinations. Um, but Jordan is getting a rather small number of vaccinations from the international community. If we look at the COVAX uh, system that has been set up, in the first allocation from COVAX, Jordan is getting around 440,000 doses. That's barely more doses uh, than have been administered in Berlin, just a single city. Um, your population is more than 20 times that. You have refugees as well. Do you feel that it's not really enough? Uh, obviously, uh, the number of doses we've gotten uh, thus far is not enough. We're working extremely hard on trying to get uh, the amount that we need to uh, uh, vaccinate our population and vaccinate everybody who is in Jordan. In uh, dealing with the, with the vaccination issue. We're treating everybody in Jordan equally. Uh, we were the first country to vaccinate a Syrian uh, refugee. Uh, we're committed to doing that. Uh, however, there is a challenge. We're talking to everybody uh, uh, with a view to ensuring that we get the vaccines. We're trying to get the uh, old vaccines that are, are, that are uh, out there. Uh, that's an ongoing process. Unfortunately, there is um, uh, more uh, demand than supply that uh, when it comes to vaccine, there's a disruption in the supply chain. We're trying very, very hard to address that. And our commitment is to vaccinate our people and to vaccinate everybody who is uh, in Jordan. But are you disappointed that Western countries are 
are prioritizing their own populations to such a massive extent compared to supporting uh, uh, organizations like COVID. Look, uh, none of us is safe until all of us are safe. I mean, uh, the, 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 the virus doesn't know borders. Uh, I think the experiment, uh, the experience that we had with, with, with the vaccine has shown how interconnected we are. So uh, as such, uh, we do believe in multilateral work to address this challenge. Uh, we're going to continue to work with our partners to make sure that we get the vaccination. Uh, it must be a global commodity. Everybody must have equal uh, access to, the, to this vaccine because, again, uh, unless we are able to uh, achieve uh, uh, immunity for the global population, uh, the risk of the vaccine uh, coming is, is there. In Jordan, we had a, uh, initially we had a, a good run uh, with the, at the, during the first wave of the vaccine, of course, that came at a very high price because we imposed a lockdown. Uh, obviously, we cannot do that again. Our economy cannot sustain that. So what we're trying to do is to establish a balance between protecting the health of the people and protecting the livelihoods of the people. And that's a very difficult balance to maintain. Uh, yet again, uh, um, uh, we must all realize that we need to work together uh, uh, efficiently in order to be able to overcome this global challenge. I mean, you've also received a large number of doses of the Sinopharm vaccine. Uh, your own Prime Minister reportedly received the Sinopharm vaccine. Did you receive that also yourself? Uh, we have a, 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 a program that is uh, aiming to vaccinate everybody. Sinopharm is a vaccine that we're trying to get. We haven't gotten the amount that we need yet, so we are in talks with the Chinese government to try and get more of that. We're also in talks with uh, AstraZeneca, with uh, also in talks with, with, with the Russian government to try and get uh, uh, Sputnik. We're also in talks with the Pfizer, Moderna. So pretty much uh, we're knocking on every door that is out there to try and, and, and get the vaccine again uh, to be able to uh, vaccinate our population and, and, and get over this pandemic, uh, obviously. Uh, are you concerned about you know this, this issue of vaccines turning into a little bit of a geopolitical battlefield that uh, you know, there's concern in the West that the Russians and the Chinese uh, are kind of uh, crowding in, bringing their vaccines when Western suppliers are failing. Do you, do you observe that yourself? Look, I, I mean, again, this is a global challenge. Uh, uh, we, uh, the number one priority is to ensure uh, that we protect the safety of our people. Uh, uh, we do not want this to be politicized. This is a, a humanitarian issue. This is a health issue. Uh, and therefore, uh, we are aware of the tremendous challenges with the, with the, with the supply chain. Uh, I think everybody's trying to address that. Uh, again, as far as Jordan is concerned, uh, we are going to get every vaccine that is, uh, whose use is authorized by our health authorities is a vaccine that we, we should get. We do not want to politicize this issue. Nobody will benefit from politicizing this issue. I think we have enough uh, politics to deal with. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a, an area where politics should not be a factor. What should be a factor is ensuring that we all protect our citizens because, again, unless all our citizens are protected, none of our citizens uh, is safe. That has been uh, the experience with the vaccine. A lot of our countries have seen an improvement in the curve, and then suddenly, over a period of one week or two weeks, the curve goes up again. Why? Because the vaccine comes you know, through the exchanges that, that we cannot disrupt. Uh, no country can lock itself away from the rest of the world. And therefore, uh, it is imperative that uh, uh, the vaccine issue remains within the realm of the, of, of the health issue, uh, and uh, uh, politics cannot and should not become a factor. Um, but the fact is that we do see China, for instance, uh, taking a much more uh, active role uh, in the Middle East. You yourself uh, co-hosted a forum with Wang Yi just last year uh, to talk about greater Chinese in in, uh, engagement in the Middle East. Some observers look at a kind of a big trend with the U United States pulling back in the Middle East and China coming in. Is that something you observe? Well. Um the U.S. has a leading role in, in, in the Middle East, and, and that role cannot really be replaced at this point. Europe has a leading role in the Middle East. The Middle East has, be, has been, unfortunately, uh, uh, an area where conflicts have continued to grow and expand. Uh, and unless we work together as partners, we're not going to be able to resolve those issues. China does have uh, a strong economic ties with the region, not much with Jordan, uh, but regionally speaking, uh, there is a a lot of economic cooperation, trade cooperation, purchase of oil and all of that. So uh, uh, that is a reality. But as far as Jordan is concerned, we, 
always see good relations with everybody based on uh, our, you know, uh, uh, international law on our, our values where we want cooperation rather than conflict, where uh, we want relations to be transparent and based on, on grounds that allow for a mutual benefit for all. I'd like to return to the, the question of, of refugees. You know, Jordan is hosting many hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees um, at the moment. You said today that it, it, it's not yet possible for them to return. Um, but have you been having discussions with the Syrian government about the possibility at some point of returning? Look, again, we have 1.3 million Syrians in Jordan. About 662,000 of them are registered with the UNHCR. The rest are not. Only 10% of, 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 of this number live in refugee camps. The rest are all over the country. Our long-standing position in Jordan is that uh, we need to provide those people with a dignified life. Uh, if you provide them with education, if you provide them with a, with a decent life, uh, 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 then uh, they will be uh, the, the people who will rebuild their country once the conditions are conducive for them to go back. If you abandon them to hate and despair and, 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 and ignorance, uh, then the challenge is going to be enormous for all of us. So our policy do everything we possibly can for them until uh, conditions are ripe for them to go back. Now, uh, before COVID, we had reopened our, our borders with Syria. Uh, the number of those who uh, went back did not exceed 50,000 uh, because ultimately the uh, decision to go back is going to be made by refugee families. Uh, I think a family of refugees are going to be sitting together over dinner and uh, discussing do we go back or do we not go back. And I think the answer is going to depend on whether they are certain that they'll be safe, that they'll be secure, that there'll be schools for their kids, uh, uh, jobs for, for, for their uh, bread earners. Uh, if that is the case, they'll go back. If not, they will not go back. Thus far, uh, uh, not many are going back. Not many are expressing a willingness to go back because, unfortunately, efforts to bring about a political solution to the crisis uh, has not yet reached uh, a satisfactory conclusion. Conditions on the ground are not improving either. So if you are a refugee family in Jordan or anywhere else, uh, uh, you're not going to go back unless you're certain you're going to have a good life uh, going back home. Uh, so as such, the challenge remains with us. Uh, uh, not many are, are going back. And until then, I think it is incumbent upon all of us to make sure that we uh, address the needs of, of those refugees, because if we do not, uh, we're having uh, a situation where we're failing uh, people and where uh, the challenge will continue to grow in the future and that will uh, face all of us. And if I may say here that, again, uh, uh, migration is a global challenge. Europe is certainly concerned about that. And uh, if we are not able in the region to uh, meet the needs of, of refugees, they will be looking at, at other places where they can uh, have their needs met. So I think it is in our strategic interest, all of us, to make sure that we come together, work together uh, to provide refugees with the decent life that they deserve until uh, they're able uh, to go back. Thus far, uh, we are not seeing a lot of interest uh, 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 by refugees to go back. And despite that, the fact that there still is no real political settlement in Syria, um, the Syrian regime now does look uh, secure. It's basically one. Um, the United Arab Emirates has been calling now, the foreign minister, your counterpart, for Syria to return to the Arab League. Do you agree with that? Look, I, I don't think that's exactly what, uh, what uh, our Emirati brethren have said. What they said is that ultimately uh, uh, Syria needs to uh, restore its peace, stability, uh, and, and resume its role in the region. What we believe is the priority right now is to uh, proceed with political efforts to find a political solution to this crisis because obviously there is no military answer uh, to it. To be quite honest with you, we have not really had a, a comprehensive strategy uh, to dealing with the crisis over the past years. It's about time we stopped, reassessed and said where do we want to go? Is the current strategy working or not? and ultimately the goal uh, needs to be to solve the crisis. And we need to remember that the Syrian crisis must and is about Syria and the Syrian people. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, uh, the crisis has been globalized. Uh, there are many uh, conflicting uh, agendas, regional and global there. But the bottom line is we have to solve this crisis. If we do not, we all are going to pay even heavier uh, a price than we have uh, thus far. 
millions of Syrians have been uh, uh, displaced, uh, either as IDPs or, or, or as, as refugees. Uh, there was a recent report by the UN uh, warning against uh, the fact that millions of Syrians do not have food security. A whole generation of Syrians are growing up without school, without, without education, without uh, proper services. All this is a recipe for a future disaster. What we need to do is, again, uh, focus all our efforts on trying to bring about a political solution that will preserve the unity of Syria, that will restore to it its safety and security, that will ensure the enduring defeat of, of terrorists, and that will uh, create conditions conducive for, for refugees to, to return. That must be the, the focus, and that's where we're working with partners, including with Germany, uh, to make sure that we have uh, horizons uh, towards that solution. But I just want to make sure I understand you there. So uh, you saying between the lines that you don't feel that Syria should return to the Arab League at this point, that that should only happen once there's a political solution in Look, Syria? Look, I, I believe Syria's return to the Arab League is part and parcel of the bigger problem. Uh, we need to make sure that Syria resumes its uh, uh, role in the region. But as we do that, we must look at the comprehensive uh, uh, crisis. Ultimately, crisis has to end. Uh, Syria has to regain its safety and security. People have to regain their right to a, a dignified life. And Syria must resume its role, including uh, going back to the Arab region. And what's incomprehensible, to be honest, is the absence of a collective Arab role in in, in, in efforts to uh, bring about an end to this crisis. It is incomprehensible, unacceptable that uh, everybody is on the table except a collective Arab, Arab effort. So what we're discussing with, with, with all our partners is how do we all come up with a strategy that would deliver an end to this humanitarian disaster, to this, to this uh, uh, catastrophe in Syria. And everybody needs to do their, to do their, 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 their part in that. And we Arab countries, after the Syrian people, are the most affected by the crisis. And therefore, it is only logical that we assume a collective part in efforts to bring about an end to this crisis. I'd like to turn to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which is obviously a big part of your visit uh, to Germany and France this week. Um, now, of course, the ground has shifted there somewhat uh, in the last year. We've had the Abraham Accords with various Gulf states uh, making peace with Israel. Um, Jordan made peace with Israel many years ago, of course. Do you feel that Jordan has been somehow sort of overtaken by these other countries uh, making these accords with Israel? Do you feel that they have given Israel a free pass on what you described earlier today as a very dangerous situation there? Look, we've, we've had a peace treaty with Israel for almost 27 years. Uh, uh, peace is a strategic choice for Jordan, indeed for uh, the whole Arab and Muslim world, and it is a necessity for regional and global uh, security. As such, we'll continue to do everything we possibly can to achieve that just and lasting peace. But in order for peace to be lasting, in order for peace to be accepted, uh, it has to address the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people uh, in a way that ensures fulfilling those, those rights, and particularly uh, their right to freedom and statehood uh, on the basis of the two-state solution, so that you see uh, an independent, sovereign Palestinian state emerging on 1967 uh, lines with the occupied Jerusalem as capital to live in peace and security with Israel. This is the only uh, answer to the problem, and this is the a collective sort of decision of the international community. The two-state solution is the only solution going forward. That said, no peace treaty between Israel and Arab countries, including the peace treaty with Jordan, can be a, a substitute for a Palestinian-Israeli peace. Uh, 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 and therefore, the core issue is the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. We want to resolve this conflict because this is how we ensure uh, that we uh, get the comprehensive peace that we all need and, and, and are, are working to uh, uh, realize. Uh, our role uh, continues to be uh, strong, to be uh, proactive, and again, we're working with all our partners in coordination with the Palestinians, in coordination with the rest of the Arab world, to make sure that we create the necessary horizons for, uh, for progress on that, on that track. But yet again, uh, I want to emphasize that the core issue is the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. No number of peace treaties will produce the comprehensive peace that we seek unless that issue is addressed in a way that, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, ensures uh, uh, the implementation of the two-state uh, uh, solution. Right now, uh, that solution is under tremendous danger. Uh, unilateral measures are compromising the viability of that two two-state solution, uh, settlement building, settlement expansion is something that 
we uh, continue to uh, warn against because it does uh, undermine uh, uh, the uh, formula upon which the whole peace process was launched uh, uh, many uh, years ago, uh, and that is the land for peace formula. So uh, we continue to work, we continue to do everything we possibly can uh, to make sure that we uh, move towards that solution and we protect the viability of the two-state solution. And, 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 and in this effort, we do work with uh, all our partners and friends, and uh, tomorrow we'll be meeting with uh, our partners in the Munich Group that includes Germany, Egypt, and France. And, and uh, what we're trying to do is, again, uh, emphasize that uh, the status quo cannot continue. The danger uh, inherent in the status quo uh, is serious, and uh, time for action is now because we do not have any time uh, to lose. Of course, we have elections coming up in both Israel and in the Palestinian territories. You know, this deadlock has occurred under the current leadership. Would you like to see a change of leadership in Israel and in the Palestinian territories? Look, it, it's not for us to decide, you know, the leadership of, of either country. I mean, it is, it's the people who, uh, their people who will, who will make that choice. But what we'd like to see is a commitment to the peace process. What we'd like to see are uh, actual measures that would allow us to have progress in, in restoring negotiations that can deliver the two-state solution. And what we'd like to see is, is uh, everybody realizing that uh, unless we uh, achieve the two-state solution, we are uh, 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 risking the future stability of the whole region, because if you, if you kill the two-state solution, the only realistic alternative that remains is a one-state solution. And one-state solution, the big question that we are all are going to have to grapple with is that is it going to be an institutionalized apartheid or is it going to be uh, a democracy where Palestinians have full uh, political rights. So what we'd like to see is genuine uh, uh, efforts by everybody to do what's right for everybody which is uh, move towards a just and comprehensive peace because nobody is doing anybody a favor by opting for peace. It is a necessity, it is a need for all and uh, without an active international role, we cannot really achieve that peace. So uh, the role that Europe is playing and has been playing uh, is, is extremely important. And we also look forward to engaging with the U.S. administration because it does have a leading role in all those efforts. And uh, we look forward in Jordan for all of us to come together and send the right messages to all the parties that the only way to move forward is to go back to the table uh, and discuss how do we move towards the two-state solution on the basis of an international law so that everybody can have their rights and concerns addressed and that uh, uh, everybody in the region will have the uh, right to live in peace and uh, uh, to, to seek uh, prosperity and to seek development for all. Um, of course, we have the 10th anniversary of the Syrian war around us. Um, it's a time where people are reflecting on the Arab uprisings. How do you feel in retrospect about how that era turned out? Again, uh, ultimately you, what we want is, is, is for all of us in the region to be able to move uh, uh, on the basis of solid, clear programs that would deliver uh, the best for our people. Our responsibility as governments is to ensure the best life for our people. That said, uh, uh, economic reform is important, political reform is important. Uh, in Jordan, we are fully committed to uh, doing everything we possibly can to ensure that we have a, a better governance, that we, that we move ahead with the reform programs. His Majesty was very, very clear, uh, including in the latest uh, letter of designation to the new government, that uh, this is a priority and we need to move forward. So ultimately, I think uh, what we in Jordan believe is that those reforms are necessary for us, for our future. Uh, we're committed to them and we're doing everything we possibly can to move forward. Uh, of course, a regional environment does have an impact, uh, but we should mitigate against that and we are mitigating against that. Uh, ultimately, uh, the Middle East uh, has more than its share of crises that are impacting our people, uh, our, our, the ability of our uh, people to realize their potential, and this must stop. And this we do by, again, uh, moving forward with uh, solving those uh, regional crises that are having a disastrous impact in, in, in many parts of our world, and also to move ahead with reforms that will ensure that we have the best, most efficient uh, uh, system of governance so that we can move forward and address those reforms and address those needs. But those reforms, of course, happen within the context Final question about of Jordan as a constitutional monarchy. Do you see and would you like Jordan to remain that? Do you think it will remain that forever? 
or do you hope in your heart of hearts that maybe one day it will be possible for Jordan to become a fully-fledged democracy? Well, again, define full-fledged uh, democracy. We, are, we believe we are uh, a country that has enjoyed uh, stability, that has enjoyed moderation, that has respected the rights of its people. It's never perfect, but that's an ongoing process and we do everything we possibly can. Uh, the monarchy is the key stabilizing factor in Jordan. It's a monarchy that has the support of the people. It's a monarchy that has... Uh, 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 been working extremely hard to ensure that we deliver the best uh, future for our people. So uh, democratic reforms are, are something that are in the core of, of the vision of His Majesty for us to move forward and we're continuing uh, with that. Ultimately there are different systems of government. The bottom line is, uh, uh, is this system of government delivering the best for its people? Is it respecting their rights? Is it moving forward to creating better horizons? We believe in Jordan we're doing that. Challenges are many. Uh, we do not say that the situation is perfect. We say, yes, we have a lot of challenges, but we're, we're working extremely hard to make sure that we address them. And I think in Jordan in particular, as I said, we are at the receiving end of every crisis in the region. So uh, what's happening in the region does have uh, uh, an impact on all our, our efforts. Uh, yet we do not give up. We try and continuously to adjust our policies and our programs to make sure that we move towards our uh, final goal that His Majesty has set as, as an objective for us, which is to move in democratic reforms, uh, create horizons, address whatever deficiencies that we have in, in, our, in our legislation and implementation of those legislation and move forward towards the best future that we can uh, provide for, for our people. But it sounds like you really mean never actually pick, people could never pick their own head of state in Jordan? Is that not something that you might dream of in the distant future? Sometime? Look, we are extremely happy with the system of government that we have. Uh, again, uh, Jordan will be uh, uh, celebrating 100 years since the establishment of Jordan uh, in the coming uh, next month. Uh, and we look at what we've done in Jordan in a region that has been plagued with crisis and, and conflicts and wars. And I think, thank God, we, we can say proudly in Jordan that we've been able to overcome many of those crises uh, due to the fact that we have a leadership that has the support of the people, a leadership that is committed to reform, uh, a leadership that is uh, uh, moderate, uh, uh, open to uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, all the challenges in an effective uh, way based on our values of uh, moderation and openness and respect and and committed to moving ahead with with uh, democratic reforms that are necessary for our country and that will increase our ability to uh, uh, do better on every aspect of life uh, uh, so ultimately uh, uh, this is a system of government that we uh, have had since Jordan uh, uh, became uh, a state uh, over 100 uh, almost 100 years ago uh, we are committed to that. It's a, it's a regime that, uh, uh, system of government that has the support of the people and we're moving forward and as such we are, uh, we're happy with what we have and uh, we are in a continuous process of uh, uh, reforming our, our legislation, introducing uh, uh, economic and, 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 and political reforms that will uh, render our ability to serve our people more effective and more efficient. Mr. Savadi, many thanks for speaking to us. Thank you, sir.